Welcome back to the last video of PWAs for a beginner series. Oh, time flies. Anyways, today we're going to see some great demos from Diego here with me in the studio again on the screen. Hi. Hello, Beth. Hope, uh, hopefully you're enjoying uh, learning from PWAs. We're going to take everything that we've talked in the previous three videos and we're just going to put it on to a small PWA, demo PWA, so we can see how easy it is to integrate some of these features. Let's do it. And I know that we're going to, there were two features that we're going to be focused on. One was uh, the window, window controls overlay that we talked about in the last video. And then the other one is sh shortcuts, right? Indeed. OK. You are correct. So let's take a look at a small demo. Here I'm going to open the browser. It's already preloaded with uh, um, PWA that we were working on. Um, what I want you to see here is in the manifest file, we have short name, uh, the name of the application, the icons that we're using for the app, start URL, ID, background color, display, scope, and the theme color, which are kind of like the basic things that we would expect to see in a manifest. So I'm going to uh, preview this application in a new window, and we can see here how it, it's loading the web page. It's basically a very simple counter. I can count things by pressing here the button uh, to go um, up and down and the browser itself is prompting me that there is an application available. So if I want it, I can just click on this button. It's telling me that it's going to install the count things app. And in a couple of seconds, we have here the application. I'm going to minimize the browser here in the background and we can see that we have the application installed. I can pin it to the taskbar to start menu uh, and just, you know, make sure that I have it always available where I want it. Um, now, there are a couple of things that we are going to add to this application. The first one is window controls overlay. As we can see here, we have the count things and I count up and down. And this is part of the title bar, which is where generally we move the app itself. So what we're going to add is um, we are going to maximize the space that we that we have for this application by making sure that this menu in where we're when we in where we would put the web share API, for example, is going to be right here on the side. And we're going, we should see that the dotted background goes up to the top. So what we're going to do is I'm going to close this um, for, you know, just the demo. I'm going to uninstall the applications, make sure that, that none of them is installed at the moment. And there you go. So I'm going to open here and I'm going to go in the manifest file and I'm going to add an interesting bit of uh, information in where I am going to say here, going to add, uh, and we're going to say that the, let me just quickly close here the preview, that the display, we're, we're overriding the display mode and we're checking uh, to see if there is a window controls overlay. So this window controls overlay, what's going to allow us to do is to get rid of the title bar uh, we're going to be able to actually turn it on and off and uh, we could use special CSS to to put uh, the content in the uh, area where we want it. So as you can see, we've added the display override now. If we go into the style CSS, we can see that one of the classes that we have is the title bar. And this title bar actually has a left and top position and a height and a width that are using new environmental variables. So this environmental uh, variable called title bar dash area dash X, title bar dash area dash Y, title bar dash area that height and title bar dash area that width are the ones that are going to give me the area that represents the uh, the part of the application is just uh, in between or to the side of the controls overlay. So um, now that we've added this, what I want to do is I want to preview the application again. So I'm going to uh, come here, make sure that let's see, let's go quickly into the elements page. And here we can see that this part, uh, it's, it's a span, this part of the web, web app, it's a span, that's uh, the title bar. It's generally the one that's always going to be here on um, the upper part of the application. So I want you to take a, a look at what happens when we're running this with a window controls overlay. So here we go. We are going to install the application again. 
remember that we've added the display mode for window control overlay we're going to allow this again and uh the application seems pretty much to be the same i am going to quickly open here uh dev tools so we can see the area where there you go this is the title bar that's running in our application but now we have this chevron this kind of little arrow that's saying if you want to hide the title bar and if i click here you can see how the application uh layout has shifted to make sure that some of the controls are now here right next to the window controls so if i now go and take a look at the uh, the title bar we can see that it's actually giving me an area uh, of uh, 443 pixels by 32 uh, that's starting from the corner of the window and this is exactly those variables that the that the environmental uh, those values that the environmental variables are giving me so this is a good way to position the content we can see again if i come here i can disable or enable um the content so just with this we can see that now the application is kind of spawning and taking uh, a more modern look and feel because uh, its layout its design is starting right from the top left corner so we can reuse this applic we can use the space to put buttons or controls or anything that pretty much every modern application is doing and we can see it in examples from uh, office from visual studio code where they have menus right in the title bar so this is the first thing that we are going to add to an application you can see that it was fairly easy again we needed to add in the manifest file a display override of window controls overlay and we also needed to make sure that in our uh, CSS uh, we had um, positioning using the new environmental variables that allow us to do exactly this so it's um it's, it's quite simple to achieve and it's a very powerful effect the next thing that I want to um, take a look at is pretty much shortcuts. So for shortcuts, we're going to go again to the manifest. And here we're going to add a new field, which is going to be a new key, which is going to be the shortcuts key. And for the shortcuts key, what we are going to add is a way of starting the count from 10 and from starting the count from 20. So I've just pasted here a snippet of code. Um, the key that we needed to add was shortcuts and this is an array that contains uh objects uh, one object pretty much per uh, shortcut that we want to do now the shortcut is going to be this type of thing that in android when you tap and hold you get different menus you get different options and on windows you can do it on the task um, on the taskbar for example so, or on the start menu as well so in this case i'm saying that i want to create um a shortcut that's that is called um start at 10 and this is the url that will trigger the event in this case i'm just for the sake of simplicity using a media query on the same index html that will just pretty much take the number that's being passed as a parameter and um setting up the counter to start in this and then we have an icon uh, that in this case it's a small number 10 uh, png it's just a number 10 uh, uh, PNG, and here we have a number 20 PNG. So let's remove this. And now what we're gonna do is, I'm going to again go ahead and uninstall count things, just so we can reinstall it again, and it reparses the manifest. So what we're gonna see here now is that I'm gonna go open the demo in a new window. And again, I'm being prompted to install the application. I am installing the application and once it is installed okay i can allow it it installs the application we have it here running and now we can see that i can open the application with start at 10 and it's actually starting the counter at 10. i can also uh, right click again and say that i want to start at 20. Um, the way that this is being achieved is because remember that in the index file we are in our index file um we have a script and we are pretty much just processing the query string in this case uh for web shortcuts we are getting the parameter uh, start and we are just setting the inner text of the counter to uh, shortcut start so this is how we are achieving this and uh, now we actually have a way of 
deep linking into a different part of our application, or in this case, just you know, either starting the application normal, or just right clicking and uh, saying that I want to start the application at a different number. And this could be done uh, to a different page that's in the scope of the PWA, uh, or you can just get creative with this. And basically by just adding the window controls overlay and shortcuts, you can see how we've just made the application feel that much more integrated into the operating system. So hope, hopefully this is an indication of uh, how you can improve your existing PWAs and how easy it is to make sure that you're getting this really deep, rich integrations for a seamless experience to your users. So what do you think, Beth? That was awesome. I feel like the counter app really feels more like a native app after that you added these features into it, right? Indeed, and it's a matter of keeping your manifest file up to date and making sure that you're just using some of the features that, that we've explained and you can see how much more polished it looks. I mean, window controls overlay does a great job at making sure that the app looks modern and shortcuts is just a great way of deep linking into your application. So whether you need to start counting at zero, at 10 or at 20, you now have an easy way of getting your user to do that task. Cool. And if you follow us along, you can see that there are so many other options that you can uh, introduce to your app to make your app feel or your progressive web app feel more like a native app. Thank you so much, Diego, again, for joining us in chapter four. And again, these are the resources that you can go learn on your own. Uh, this is the end of our PWA for beginner series. Hopefully that you learned a lot, just like me. Um, at the end of the day, it's a website and it's an app and it's a merge of the best worlds. Whee! <laughs>